So someone on Goodreads just popped on and liked my review of Assault, A World History by Mike Kurlansky, narrated by Scott Brick. I, another audio for me. I gave this two stars. It should have been good, but it really, really wasn't. It was quite woeful. I didn't finish it. It's a non-fiction microhistory and I expected to be really fascinated. I expected it to be full of this facts and science about this amazing mineral. Salt, sodium chloride, is unique. Without it, humans can't live. Most animals can't survive. It's shaped trading and cultures. It is, I think it's the only mineral that is also a spice. There's so much. I expected to be fascinated, informed and intrigued. And I like microhistories. I've always wanted one about salt and one about coffee. Here was salt. I was really, really sad back in 2021 to not enjoy this book. But that is not my fault. This one is on the author. A lot of the information that is here, but it failed to fascinate, it failed to intrigue, and it failed to inform. Anywhere near as much as I expected. There was virtually no science of any kind. It was about trade and human history, which is okay, but it wasn't well done. The writing felt like it was lists a lot of the time. It repeated itself so much of the time that one became bored with by the information, even though the information itself could have been interesting. And for one example, if you look into ancient cultures, many ancient cultures used salt pans. And because of the physical nature, chemi chemistry and nature of salt itself, the salt pans weren't that different to each other. I get it. Now, instead of detailing exactly what every single culture did, every time he started on a new culture, he could maybe have described it once and then describe the differences because they are so similar and he just repeated himself with every single culture because a salt pan is a salt pan and there's not a lot of differences between them. So that was a poor decision making and it's just one symptom of endemic poor decision making that was all the way through this novel. I think even the narrator must have been exceptionally bored. Here's an experienced narrator and actor, as I understand it, but the longer lists of salt pans and cultures was often read in an unvarying drone. It might be better read than listen to because then you can skip over the long lists and the recipes. Skip the recipes. Now, another problem that I had with this book personally is that this is not my first book by this author. Cod, a biography of the fish that changed the world. Excellent book. Herring. My God, herring is mar marvellous. But the thing is that a lot of what's in these books is also in salt. So as we... Oh yes, the recipes. Fish recipes in both of these. Most of which I haven't tried. I don't eat fish. Reading recipes is never anyone's favourite Thing. Re narrating recipes is obviously not the narrator's favorite thing and yes most recipes about fish have salt but they're the same recipes always narrated in a long bored drone so as we progressed through this book I was so bored that I was spending more time analyzing my responses to the book than what was being said this is not a good thing in a book the conclusion that I reached is that the author is a great researcher, really, really great. He's especially interested in history and trade, but he's got virtually no interest in science whatsoever, nor in the natural world, because as I noticed in these two fish books, he doesn't really talk about the biology of the fish all that much and almost nothing about ecology, which you'd expect to find in a book about fish. In salt, this is even more obvious. So over the many years of research and note taking that he, he's done, he noticed how often salt cropped up in both history and trade. At some point, he or his publishers decided it was a shame not to use all that research, even if most of it had already been used in other novels, they decided to put it together into a whole new book, Salt, a book that could have been a dream of microhistory and instead is tedious as it repeats large sections from everything else an author has ever done. It reads more like a pile of notes assembled by a PhD student who keeps changing his major and can't decide what he's interested in. That's what salt reads like. So there's no co co 
cogent narrative for his thesis. It's just a pile of notes that never actually get published. And I don't think Salt should have been published. It needed to be sent back for further editing, which is what the publishers should have do, done. This became a do not finish for me. At the end of ch chapter 14, I realised that my library loan, loan had expired. My main feeling was relief. I had no urge to renew or reborrow. I never wanted to hear that miserable drone Scott Brick inflicted on, on the micro history. And... There was just nothing there. It was so disappointing. Hopefully, hopefully one day someone will actually write a proper microhistory of salt and I'll give it a go. But this is not it.